we will welcome the third presentation of today's session. Uh, the topic is gamification facilitated independent language learning in hybrid and online education. The speakers are Olivia Yichun Sun. She is an educational technologist at Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University. And uh, together with Olivia Shu Han Li, she is an associate uh, language lecturer at Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University. So let's welcome the two ladies. Uh, so hello everyone, thank you for joining the session. Uh, today our presentation is about uh, gamification facilitated independent language learning in hybrid and online education. And I'll be presenting with uh, my fellow colleague, Olivia. Uh, so just a brief overview um, about our role at the Shan Jiao Tong Liverpool University. Uh, I am an associate language lecturer uh, and uh, I currently teach year one e uh, English for academic purposes uh, course. And Olivia is uh, our educational technologist and she's also a PhD student currently studying at Shan Jiao Tong Liverpool University. Um, so just a quick overview of our talk today. Uh, we're going to cover mainly four different uh, themes in our presentation. And the first one is uh, about how uh, I, as a teacher, incorporate a gamification elements in my teaching and to facilitate students' independent language learning, primarily online, um, and what has worked well for me, what can be improved um, when I'm using a particular uh, a gamification plugin on Learning Mall called Level Up to gamify students' language learning. And later on, uh, Olivia is going to introduce a few technologies available at our school to support gamification and how they have been used and what kind of support are available to our teachers in our university to experiment with using these technologies in teaching and learning. Um, hang on. So just a general overview of what uh, the setting, the context we're discussing this topic about. Um, so I am currently teaching uh, English for academic purposes course at this uh, joint venture university, Xi'an Zhao Liverpool University. Uh, it's an English medium university and my student group are year one freshman Chinese students. Uh, they're studying in this English medium university and, and are expected to use English for all their academic courses. And so um, they're also uh, expected to study abroad in University of Liverpool uh, in, in their third year and fourth year. Uh, so the basic learning outcomes, it's actually the EAP course is actually required for these students. And the learning outcomes, the main learning outcomes of this course is to focus on the English and the academic skills that prepare these students for their future study in English at this university. Um, it's actually a combination um, of course-based and independent language learning. And by that, I mean part of the course, which is nine hours of uh, the course each week is uh, on campus face-to-face -face class. And there are also uh, there is also a component of online independent learning expected from the students, um, where they're expected to complete some online activities and do some previews and review activities online that are core for their understanding, uh, for uh, for them to follow the on campus classes. And by independent language learning, uh, which I'm defining here as any language learning effort that's carried out and designed by the students themselves. Although a, a lot of the online learning component of this course is not necessarily designed by the students, but it's definitely self-paced and uh, carried out by the students themselves. Um, so why I, am I, uh, so why are we talking about gamification here and why have that, oops, sorry, uh, been combined with my particular course? is actually, um, so I'm, I'm quoting a, uh, a definition here, uh, but it's mainly actually because uh, firstly, based on theory, it leads to greater student engagement and participation in online course activities. But why we're using it is because we're experiencing, we're observing a lower student engagement and participation in 
online activities in our semester one EAP class, uh, where students are only um, completing around uh, lower than 20%, around 14% of the online activities, which has negatively influenced their learning performance in their on-campus classes and in their assessment performance. So uh, that has been an issue with our um, kind of combination of online and on-site uh, learning. And also uh, before the semester two, which was actually this semester between March and June, before this semester, I have conducted several interviews with my students and um, uh, kind of getting an idea. It's a kind of like a needs assessment, getting an idea of what they're anticipating, what would they what they would like to gain from the course and what are some anticipated challenges uh, they have in independent language learning and online language learning. And the general theme that I'm observing from these interview is sustaining motivation. A lot of the students are worried about um, not having enough motivation to help them carry out the language learning plans and the expected amount of self-study in their um, in their uh, EAP course. So I'm quoting some, some, some students here just to demonstrate what I mean by sustaining motivation, the challenges in their sustaining motivation. Um, oh, several themes, common themes I have from the students is, first of all, they don't have a clear learning goal and um, progress markers. Um, we have a quite a broad range of learning outcomes for for our uh, EAP class and uh, ranging from listening, speaking, reading, and writing. So a lot of times this could be very overwhelming for first year students. And there are too many things that they need to improve and they don't know what to focus on in their first year. And also procrastination, which is a common theme among our uh, students is uh, among basically all student groups. Um, is that they get very motivated in the beginning, but their motivation, you know, dampens uh, as the semester goes on, as they get busier. They even if they have a plan in the beginning, but since there's a lot of times for online self-paced learning, they don't have any deadlines, so they keep putting putting it off. And also, they mentioned that there's no immediate incentives and rewards that comes from learning or completing the activities online. They don't immediately get anything from online activities and the lack of social supports because all, a lot of the online activities are conducted alone instead of in a group. And so this is why I decided to explore some of uh, the gamification techniques uh, and the, the particular technique I'm using in my class with my students is, is a plug in on a learning management platform called Learning More Online, which is powered by Moodle. Um, and this particular plugin is kind of a gamification, um, gamified version of learning chapters. And there's some of the mechanics of this plugin on this uh, on learning mall is uh, they include a point system where students accumulate points. I'll show you some examples later of how uh, that works. And also um, it allows students and teachers to maintain a leaderboard comparing uh, how the students are achieving uh, in this course. And it allows the users to rise through levels, which is why it's called level up. Uh, it, right, as students accumulate points, they get certain levels and they get a badge uh, at certain milestones when they reach certain points. So these are some of the elements that's making this plugin kind of a gamification uh, version of learning chapters. Uh, so this is just an example of how um, the levels basically work. Uh, the when the students are completing, as I introduced before, the students are are expected to complete certain activities and uh, self learning, uh, self study activities and tasks online. As they complete them, uh, the learn the level up plug in attribute experience points to the students for their actions. So basically, um, as you can see here in the in the screenshot to the left, when students, for example, attend an online course 
on big blue button, which is kind of like Zoom, uh, they get set certain points. Um, and if, if the students complete a coursework, an assignment, they get certain points. And when students upload a file or view a document or download something, they also get certain points, um, basically uh, rewarding students for any activities they complete on this uh, learning management system. Uh, and the teachers actually have total control over the points earned per action. We can customize how many points students earn for each action they complete. And the students, uh, you can design the system so that certain content is unlocked when a level is reached. So students cannot access uh, the files of uh, the next week's materials, for example, if they don't complete this week's materials. Um, and when students complete, uh, sorry, when students get to certain points, they get to a level, uh, which is what you can see here on the PPT. Um, when specific amounts of points are reached by the students, they lead to certain levels. And as teachers, you can customize how many levels there are, uh, which I'm using the week numbers here because we have different weeks in the semester. So each level actually represents a week. Uh, and you can also, so you can see these stars here. These stars actually represent a batch that the students receive as a reward after they reach certain level. And you can customize their appearance to make them more appealing, but I'm just using a star here and the number here. Um, these are created, so for my particular use of this plugin, I'm creating these levels based on the key learning outcomes and skill focus of each week, uh, which I'm showing you here an example. Um, for each week, I tell the students what the topic uh, is. Uh, we actually cover quite a wide range of skills and content in our EAP class. So uh, I would um, clarify in the main page of the learning mall, the, the system, uh, about what the focus is related to uh, writing, what the focus is related to speaking, and the key deadlines and tasks, which are linked to the tasks students complete, the activities that they complete on Learning Mall. And so the students get a signposted kind of uh, overview of each level, what each level entails, what they need to complete to reach each level, what are some key learning outcomes they need to complete uh, in order to reach that level. Level. Uh, so it's uh, basically um, the students go from when students go from each week one to week two, they reach certain level. They're expected to reach certain levels as they complete the activities. Um, and one of the most uh, uh, fun feature of this plugin is is a ladder. Uh, as its name suggests, it basically is a ranking of students' experience points. So as they gain experience points, uh, they, uh, they, the, how many points they have received are actually going to be shown on the main page of their learning, their own learning mall, uh, but also they can see how they rank among their classmates, their peer classmates on the ladder, uh, through the ladder of this plugin. Um, and as a teacher, you also get a report of how uh, and when and uh, what each students are doing uh, of, to reach each levels. And uh, when students complete certain weeks activities, they receive a notification uh, both on learning more and on email to congratulate them as they level up uh, kind of looking like this. Um, so basically the system is designed so that whenever students log into this course on learning more, they, they get notify they get the uh an idea of where they are in the class and which level they are and what they what further points they need to earn in order to move on to the next level um and this is something that i have been using this is unrelated to what the plugin on learning mode but this is something that i have been doing extra uh, related to this gamification plugin where uh, after i see the students ranking which you can see here this is an example of uh, my students i i've hidden their names here but this is uh, an example of their ranking in the class and at the end of the semester i would um, give them prizes based on the ladder uh, and i would uh, 
uh, give them a, a basically a, an award, a, a printed a printed award, and the students are actually the, the bottom two pictures are how the students are actually posting them on social media to show oh I have I have got this ranking I got this award in this class, um, and uh, I would also give them prizes based on how they rank in the in the ladder. Um, so just very quickly, what uh, has worked well uh, with my using this um, uh, uh, plugin in my class is, um, first of all, based on the uh, based on what I'm observing on learning more, we have a higher activity completion rate, uh, but I'm not uh, comparing it with last semester because I have a different student group and I don't have the data from last semester, but uh, the, the completion rate of my class this semester has risen to 30% compared to the general uh, average 14 or 12% last semester. Um, and also, uh, based, I have conducted uh, an interview. Uh, I have conducted interviews with uh, six of my students at the end of the semester. Um, and so, here are some some quotes that indicated what they think have worked well for them uh, in terms of using this level up uh, plugin in the class. So, as you can see here. Um, I'm using Dornier's theory here to kind of uh, introduce what are some strategies that they have gained uh, to motivate themselves. So uh, first of all, the, uh, the level up page constantly reminds them of what they need to do to get to the next level, uh, which is related to Dornier's mega, me, metacognitive control. Um, and also, if you look at the second point, it's helpful to have prizes and rewards, which is help students to kind of clarify what kind of commitment they need to make and what make them more basically more committed to the goals that they need, want to achieve in the semester. And the third point here, um, having levels adds an element of fun to the tasks that were supposed to be boring, uh, a lot of the language tasks, but uh, having different levels maybe, and also if you look at the fourth point, uh, because level is always, always saying nice things and sending nice messages to the students. Oh, even if they just click on one folder, it tells them, oh, you have gained five points by clicking on this photo, by viewing this document, by downloading it. It's basically, um, I students say it's silly, but people like nice messages. And uh, we sometimes uh, review the ladder in class uh, where students can see their ranking among their peers uh, and people wouldn't want to be shamed, publicly shamed to be seen at the bottom. So this is also a kind of uh, environmental control where students are expecting to, you know, rank higher in, in front of their peers uh, and uh, kind of serves as a motivation for them. And also, uh, as I have shown you before, because the syllabus sometimes doesn't tell the students what are the key learning outcomes of each week. So uh, this the level up allows the teachers to define what are some key tasks they need to complete for each level, which helps the students understand what exactly they need to do for each level uh, in case they lose track of everything going on. Um, so, uh, some of the limitations and challenges that the students uh, that sorry uh, that I have um, observed by using this plugin in my classroom is um, it's very it could be very time consuming for teachers to to kind of plan this platform where we need to kind of put decide all the points all the systems uh, uh, sorry uh, decide which uh, which activities lead to how many points and what are some key uh, activities they need to complete in order to reach certain level. It's a lot of work uh, for the teachers. Um, and because uh, different students, as I mentioned before, in terms of independent language learning, might have different goals for their uh, language learning. And the level up actually defines these goals for the students instead of having them decide the goals for, for themselves. So this could be, there could be a disconnection between their personal goals and the learning outcomes. Um, and also um, we do have both online activities and on-site activities. So it's hard for us to really integrate, integrate what is conducted actually inside the class uh, to, to use the level up on uh, plugin online to kind of incorporate that into the point system. 
I'm going a little bit faster here because we don't we're running out of time. Um, some suggestions um, that I would provide for teachers who would like to use Level Up plugin for the future classroom is, um, as I mentioned before, because the goals are actually defined by the teachers instead of the students on Level Up, it's actually helpful to negotiate these goals with the students, not for them in the beginning. I didn't do that this semester since I wasn't, a, um, I didn't have the time to do that. I decided to use Level Up kind of right at the beginning of the semester, but I definitely recommend that goals are defined and negotiated with the students, not for them. Um, and to constantly revisit these goals and progresses in class and to allow some class time for students to discuss what they have been doing online and discuss uh, what their levels are and discuss their, their plans for the semester. And also just to provide feedback on their choice of materials and methods that help them, that would probably help them with extra learning that's not defined on level up um, because sometimes students can be very limited to constraint to what is offered on, on the platform. And also as the teacher, you can also join the gamification. You can also complete the activities with the students, which could also be very motivating for the students. Uh, sorry, Olivia, turning to you. Okay, thank you, Shuhan, for introducing how uh, gamification is used in your teaching. Yes, so um, I'm going to actually talk about um, a few, as an institution, a few uh, technologies available at XGTLU to support gamification and a few cases that um, gamification have been used by some of our teachers um, in the, within the institution and the kind of support that we provide to our teachers to experiment with you using these technologies. So um, as Shuhan talked about, we use um, Learning More as our learning man management system or virtual learning environment. And uh, Level Up is actually specifically designed for um, gamification. Um, and unfortunately, um, it's a bit complicated to set up, um, but I would say it's more systematic as well. And it covers uh, almost um, all, all the key elements of um, gamification, leaderboards, badge points, um, experience system, these kind of things. So um, the merit, as I think um, Shu Han talked about, um, um, in her talk as well, is that uh, it not only helps students to visualize their, the goals uh, and define their goals and keep their progress uh, uh, very clearly, it also helps teachers um, especially when they set up the um, courses, it helps them to think about what uh, and define what are, what the levels are and define the goals more clearly as well. So it helps them to conceptualize what they want to cover in their course. Um, so it, it, it's a kind of helps them to um, clarify a few things themselves as well. Um, and uh, we've seen Level Up used in many cases, including, um, I think very helpful, um, especially in those courses that are elective courses and self-paced. Um, so if it's only, for those courses, if it's only like a module page, then it's pretty difficult for to students to navigate and um, motivate them to go through all the elements of the page. So Level Up um, was used in those cases very successfully as uh, we were told by our teachers to help those students to keep, uh, keep motivated and go through all the elements and define their own goals. Um, the other one is H5P I listed here. It's actually not designed specifically for gamification, but a few elements can be used for gamification. For example, like three, uh, 360 videos with interactive elements and um, interactive quizzes. Um, I would say H5P is a bit more newer. And um, since it is based on H5, um, HTML5, it works on other platforms as well. So for level up, it's like it lives in our LMMS system, but H5P can, can be also used to create open educational resources 
which teachers can recycle and reuse and they can download um, and the, the, to be used on other platforms, major websites, share with their colleagues. So it has more flexibility in terms of that. Um, and we also have other devices as well, um, like iPads and the, uh, VR and AR devices that um, teachers can use to create more complicated gamification environments. Um, so, uh, for example, um, some of the projects we've seen, um, teachers uses VR to um, create um, gamified environment in, uh, to teach students to learn uh, characters and with leaderboards and experiences system built in to motivate them to go through the whole system. I would say um, AR VR is actually kind of naturally connected to gamification. So we're very happy that um, these devices can also be used to um, um, support gamification at XJTLU as well. So um, another part I wanna cover in this part of the talk is that um, the kind of support we give to our uh, teachers to facilitate the use of these tech, uh, kind of technologies or new techniques in their teaching. The first is documents um, to which, for example, um, for um, level up, we build up these kind of information portals, which covers generic information um, about the the tool and how it's being used by other universities. Uh, some of the best practices, we create case study videos. Uh, we invite our teachers who has used um, who have used to game, game, uh, level up successfully in their teaching, talk about their experiences. And also um, the, the pages you can see here, it's actually, um, constructed is sort of like a, a level up structure. So through learning this kind of generic information, teachers experiencing how these things would, would look like from a student point, point of view. And then they can decide if they want to use it in their own teaching. And also we provide the information about research and that sort of things. Um, and also we have information portals for like uh, H5P. Um, and um, it's similarly, there are gen gener generic information. And also um, lots of examples. If you are familiar with H5P, you probably know it could do lots of things <laughs> about like 40 or 50 different kinds of activities H5P can do. So we've built these kind of um, um, examples, uh, put them there and for our teachers to experiment and play with as well. Um, so the other kind of documentation that we provide to our teachers is that um, on, top of, on top of those kind of generic information and uh, examples that, that they can try out, we have a knowledge base which our teachers can use to search this kind of information. And also what is more important is that in, it's um, geared towards providing this kind of um, a platform for teachers to find niche technical information that they need while setting up the um, activities or the tools. So for example, um, how to create badges, how to create in, in level up, how to uh, manage this kind of levels. So on these platforms, uh, on this platform, we will provide this kind of uh, support for niche uh, information for teachers to search. So after the consultation, perhaps, um, you know, they've got a general idea of what they need, need to do, but the, the little details sometimes get lost um, in between conversations or get forgotten afterwards. This is kind of a um, platform we provide to help teachers to be able to um, refer back to, if you would say, and to refresh their memory and get in, in um, just in time help. Um, and also we have um, COP, oh, sorry. Um, so community of practice, 
which according to um, the founder of Pro uh, community of practice, this concept um, refers to groups of people who are interested in certain topics and they come together and share their experiences. So um, for, for us, we organize like monthly um, gatherings for community of practice um, and on different topics. This one is actually about 360 videos, but um, yeah, so this kind of uh, chances is for t uh, are for teachers to um, basically have a have a um, chance to talk to each other and share a few ideas. Um, I th and I think we are <laughs> out of time, but yes, um, the last one is consultations, as I mentioned as well. So I I guess it's over to you, Lina. Thank you, Shu Han. Thank you, Olivia, for the interesting presentation uh, about gamification. And due to the time limitation, we will need to move on. I, I can see uh, you've already answering the questions in the Q&A. Thank you.